Hey folks, welcome back to Just the Tip, our new series on practice tips, tricks, and troubleshooting. In these short videos, I'll be discussing some of the perennial problems I see in the longsword training community and share my ideas on how to fix them. Today's topic is how to properly roll to tummy. This is a fairly simple process. Some might even say it's self-explanatory, but in my many years of running cutting workshops, either in my own training halls or at other HEMA schools or even at tournaments, there's always some explanation and education that needs to be done for those involved. So here it is, the brief definitive guide on how to roll a mat for cutting practice. Come, join me outside. Okay, so here we are outside. Um, as promised, I'm going to uh, demonstrate rolling a mat for you. Um, it's a fairly simple process. You've probably seen other people do this, um, but like most things, uh, especially in martial arts, uh, it's about the details, right? So I want to go through the entire process, um, show you a little uh, tips and tricks uh, as I go along, and I'll show you some bad examples as well. Okay, so let's get started. First things first, and this is honestly more a little bit about uh, I don't want to say aesthetics, but a little bit about cleanliness, um, is to not have the raw edges um, exposed, right? So we're going to put those inside. How we're going to do that is we're going to fold the big sheet of tatami in half long ways, okay? So basically we're making a, a taco here. Um, and we're going to have the open ends towards you, okay? We're going to start rolling from that way. That way it ends up uh, secure on the inside. Okay, so the main trick to this entire process, and this is the main detail I want to stress, is keeping the roll nice and tight. All right, I'll show you a bad example in a moment. Okay, How to actually go about doing that, I've seen it done a few different ways. This is my kind of personal favorite way, I suppose. Uh, and this is also why I'm half sitting is, since you only have two hands and a bit of length to deal with, we're actually going to use two hands and a foot, all right? So we're going to start by basically, don't even think of it as rolling at this point, just think in terms of folding a very narrow strip of the ends, okay? You can start in the middle, you can start on either side, it doesn't matter, okay, but the idea is you're going to have one way or another three hands here. So for right now, I'll actually start off to the side, fold that down nice and small, nice and tight, okay? To keep this pinned in place, this is where my third hand comes, just pin it down, okay? That way I can work on just kind of forming this crease as we go along, okay? Unless you have really uh, dexterous toes, probably can't start rolling with all three uh, appendages, okay? So I'm just going to start from this side. All right, don't worry about this for now, okay? But what I'm gonna do is now, it's got three and a half hands really, if you think about it, okay, I'm just gonna pin that down with my knee. That way I can move off to the other side and repeat, repin, right? Simple enough. You're not gonna have to do the entire length of the mat this way, okay? It's really just these first few inches when you get that uh, very tight, first portion of the roll, this is where it's most important, okay? So just watch me. Again, it's it's really just about maintaining a kind of pressure on that, maintaining that nice tight fold. So it doesn't take very much after you get that uh, tight uh, beginning established. From this point, it's just a two-hand ordeal. You can continue rolling all the way down the rest of the length of the mat. And here we are. Folded end is on the outside, okay. Again, I suppose it's more about aesthetics than anything. On some of the cheaper mats I've seen on the, uh, the, the rough edge, it just tends to pull apart after it gets soaked. It just ends up looking kind of a mess. Uh, you have all these distracting, you know, pieces of uh, I call them feathers, just the, the, the bits that are left over. So this just makes it look a lot, lot uh, well, cleaner, really. That's, that's the best word for it. 
Okay. So, as you can see, as a result of that uh, uh, obsessive rolling at the beginning, okay, we have a very nice, tightly rolled mat, and this is really what we want um, to happen. I'll get into the reasons in just a second, but you can see, just here, no space, there's no hole, nothing, just a solid roll. Okay, so the next step, really the last step, is to band it, all right, just to keep it in this shape. Um, I've seen a few different options, and I'll show you some examples of different and in some cases unorthodox uh, methods for uh, binding this together. For me personally, I tend to use uh, rubber bands. Um, I don't know necessarily if rubber bands have specific uh, shapes or sizes or gauges or, or anything like that, but this is basically what I look for uh, in an office supply store or, or, or whatever, okay? It's not very thin, uh, it's got some uh, width to it. Beyond that, okay, it's not just about whatever size rubber band, but for these uh, standard size, I'll call them standard, they're standard to me at least, um, we are going to double them up, okay? Now I've seen this phrase misinterpreted, okay? So I do not mean put two individual rubber bands at the same point, okay? This is not what I mean, okay? I mean with one rubber band, you're gonna put that in place, and then double that up, okay? And you can move it to wherever it needs to go, okay? So just to clarify, okay, one band per location, but wrapped twice around itself, okay? So it's nice and tight. Again, the idea is you wanna keep this tightness. Afterwards, when we soak this, all right, we're going to throw it into a bin. Um, this will expand a little bit, but we want it to expand internally and become more dense rather than uh, expand outwards and say, uh, stay the same density or, or become even more uh, kind of sponge-like, okay? Again, a bad example uh, is on the way, okay? In terms of how many rubber bands you should put or binding materials you should put, um, it varies, I would say, more than three, probably less than six, okay? Four is a good number, five is a good number, especially for, uh, let's say, beginners, uh, just because you'll have everything held together a little bit more uh, in case of flubbed cuts or, you know, you have pits, uh, pieces spraying everywhere. It'll just stay solid, uh, a solid entity for uh, a little bit longer uh, than otherwise. If, for example, you only have three rubber bands spaced out, um, and let's say you hit one of them, well, really, the, uh, the leftover is going to fall apart that much sooner, and you don't really get the same bang for your buck uh, per minute, okay? So, for this one, just for the demonstration purposes, I'm just going to use uh, four rubber bands. Again, this is not rocket surgery, all right? It's just a matter of taking the rubber band. Again, just to reiterate one more time, double it up and move it into space, right? Simple, right? Okay, so, I cannot stress this enough, right? The, the main detail here, the main goal is to keep this nice and tight, okay? So as promised, here's a bad example, and I've seen this done uh, more times than I care to admit, okay? It looks great from the outside, right? Everything, for all intents and purposes, looks the same for my other one, except you can see this huge gap in the center, okay? I would say, and again, you know, this process takes some getting used to, okay? Uh, so some error is to be expected, but if that hole in the center is wider than the width of your pinky, your small finger, right? start over and do it again, okay? Issues with this, as I said before, okay, it's gun uh, not gonna be as dense as it ought to be. Um, if you're doing rising strikes, for example, it's much more prone to like just flying off the peg. Um, it's just gonna be a more annoying experience in general, okay? So just avoid this, all right? If you see it, any sort of large gap, okay, this one's about the size of my uh, index finger, okay? Unroll it, start again just as I uh, uh, demonstrated before, okay? Use all the appendages you have around you. Use a friend, right, if you, you don't want to use your feet. Um, but try to get this 
uh, much tighter than this. Okay, you saw the other one before. Okay? So, bad example. Okay, so as I mentioned before, um, you can use uh, various different things to keep this bound together so long as it keeps it tight. Um, I mentioned already, okay, I prefer rubber bands. It's not the best thing in the world, but for me, it's certainly the most convenient. I'll come back to uh, one of the pros uh, to the, using the rubber bands uh, in a moment. Um, duct tape. Duct tape um, is not a great method, but I've had to do it at least once uh, in my career. Um, it can be tricky, though, depending on the tape. Uh, once this soaks, um, sometimes you might see that the, uh, the adhesive of the tape might break down and it'll just kind of come undone and then that you know defeats the entire purpose of this uh, uh, whole procedure. So uh, as a last ditch, um, I don't have any other option option duct tape or any other sort of uh, tape yeah it's 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 better than nothing uh because nothing is basically useless um twine or thread um or ribbon um this is just uh i think some uh kind of cooking twine uh for uh like trussing turkeys or something like that um this is a decent enough choice um, I say that with some reservation. Um, one of the issues with just cutting in general is what to do with the uh, the leftovers, the detritus. Um, if you're living in a city, uh, it's probably going to end up in a contractor bag and put on the, uh, the the street corner for trash pickup. You know, it, it is what it is. Um, I tend to, because this is essentially biodegradable, I tend to throw it on a compost heap. Um, it takes a while to, uh, to, to, to break down and, and compost a few years, um, but it will. Um, so if you have that option, if you're out in the country or at least the suburbs, you have a garden and you have like a, a dedicated composting area, it is an option. And for that reason, I would suggest using something to bind the mats together that is also biodegradable. That way you don't have to like sort out you know, picking apart the pieces of tape or, or rubber bands um, for that process, because, you know, obviously you don't want to mix that stuff in with your uh, uh, compost. Um, one big con, I would say, to this method it is it takes forever. Uh, you're hand knotting every single string uh, one by one. Uh, if you don't have a crew of people to roll and uh, bind the tatami, together, um, not a great option. You're going to be doing this for quite some time, uh, so keep that in mind. It, it is more time consuming than any other process. Uh, lastly, uh, this might come as a surprise, but I have seen this done uh, a few times. Uh, this is uh, apparently uh, more common on the uh, west coast, I'm not sure why, but zip ties. I don't use zip ties. Um, I've just seen it done. I've, I've experienced zip ties. Uh, this one in particular is a little bit wider than I would use if I were to use them. It's just the only zip tie I had lying around, uh, so I wanted to use it as an example. Um, the Pro, it's quick, um, especially if you have somebody uh, off to the side who's already looping them together. All you have to do is, you know, pull them tight. Super simple. Um, and it will definitely keep everything tight. That is also a, a pro to the uh, zip tie method. Um, but there's a lot of cons too. I mean, it's plastic, obviously. Um, it's it's 2020. Uh, we've had enough problems with this year. Uh, moving forward, I don't think we should use uh, any sort of single-use plastic, uh, zip ties included. So again, I would I would categorize that with the duct tape as. Uh, if you don't have anything else, sure. But maybe just go out and you know buy some rubber bands or, or just find twine somewhere. There, there's probably other options. Um, if it comes down to using many, many zip ties or not cutting for that week because you can't make it to the store, wait a week, maybe, I think. Just that, that's just me being a, a, a little bit more environmentalist uh, about it. So there we have it, right? Zip ties twine, string, ribbon, what have you, duct tape 
for similar reasons as uh, as the zip ties rubber bands okay so as I promised I wanted to come back to this uh, idea I am not entirely sure if rubber bands uh, elastic bands are technically biodegradable I assume they are either probably not or they would take so long to completely degrade that I would consider them not biodegradable okay so this is one of the pros slash cons this is, this is a bit of a gray area this is something that I've just taken for granted as part of this entire process is whenever possible collect these after you're done okay if there are any matte fragments that haven't uh, completely severed the rubber band uh, from them tear them off right get everyone you know everyone who's been cutting for you know at the the, the workshop or class right get them all involved right that's what they're there for right to, to learn and help of help clean up um, but gather these up and just put them in a bin put them in a bag use them again right until they're actually lacerated and and, and no longer usable as rubber bands uh, recycle them right again this is me being a little bit more you know on my my environmentalist pedestal so they are to a certain extent reusable until they're not um, but again if you are composting the the detritus the rest of the mats again take those few extra minutes um, as you're cleaning everything up you're cleaning the you know the, the training hall or the in my case my backyard uh, just pick them up and, and throw them out uh, that way they're not mixed in uh, into the environment or your compost pile all right so that uh, is a little bit of a kind of bonus uh, for this video is, is other options and the the pros and cons uh, therein okay so the last phase um, and I'm not going to get into this in this video okay but uh, the last phase of this entire process is of course soaking so there we have it um, again hopefully uh, very simple probably self-explanatory um, uh, post on how to prepare tatami um, as always of course if you have any questions uh, you can leave them in the comments section um, if you're on YouTube if you're on patreon thank you and you know this uh, just comment below uh, on the post um, that's pretty much it um, I'd love to hear uh, if you've come up with any other uh, unique or even more unorthodox ways of uh, keeping these bound together. Until next time, take care. Be sure to like and subscribe to our YouTube channel, and join us on Patreon for early access and exclusive content. See you there.